This is the Nova V3 Tour. It is by far the heaviest of the Nova V3 line that is available in February of 2024 from a company called Diadem. And at 100 square inches, it is definitely a beefy boy with specs somewhat between the Pure Drive and the Pure Drive Tour, the latter which is unfortunately discontinued. This is clearly meant for the modern aggressive baseliner because of the weight, the string pattern, and best of all, a 69 nice stiffness rating. But since I'm searching for a new racket, since the Yonix E-Zone DR98 has been giving me massive golfer's elbow and I gotta sell five of these for some reason, stay tuned to see if this is my new racket of choice. The answer might actually surprise you. Right off the bat, you can tell that this racket is extremely quick for its weight. 11.1 ounces unstrung and 11.6 strung. But it's pretty obvious that it is because the unstrung balance of 12 points head light. Every single shot from the baseline, from the backhand drive all the way to the forehand defensive slice, made this racket feel like half an ounce lighter than its listed weight. The spin potential along with the launch angle were actually perfect. With the two string setups that I'll talk about later in this video, I felt extremely confident in placing the ball in all parts of the court from the baseline, with a few minor exceptions that I'll talk about later in this video. The slices, surprisingly, had a lot of action going through the air and stayed low after the bounce to catch my opponent by surprise for an unforced error. But the two best things about this racket from the baseline were the cross-court angles especially the short dippers that you can hit with from the baseline, both with my one-handed backhand and heavy topspin forehand. The racket was so maneuverable that the predictability of the launch angle and the spin consistency gave me confidence to spread my opponent all over the court left and right. You would think that a modern tennis racket for aggressive baseliners would be pretty mid at best at the net, right? Well, thankfully not. The maneuverability continued at the net along with the stability and consistency of the depths of the volleys. Also, this racket was pretty beastly for serves. The flat serves, to no one's surprise, were powerful, accurate, and predictable. And the best surprise of all is that the racket was beautiful for the slice serves, both on the deuce side, out wide, and the ad side up the tee, because I'm a righty. I felt so confident in the slice serves that I do it about 50% of the time for second serves with this racket. Also, this is a very comfortable racket for being rated as a 69 stiffness. Nice. Honestly, it feels like a 65 stiffness rating for my arm, shoulder, and wrist. But with all this praise, this is still not an objectively perfect racket. So let's talk about some of the negatives after today's sponsor, me. Come join me on Twitch where I stream Monday and Wednesday nights. As of lately, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3 with my friend and third favorite moderator on Discord, Dares, along with a healthy dose with a pint of whiskey and also some COD Warzone. So if you have any questions about tennis strings, rackets, or anything in general, come in and enjoy the chaos. Let's knock this obviousness out of the way. Even for a stiff frame, this has a very muted feeling, especially for the one-handed backhand drive. The forehand wasn't nearly as noticeable, probably due to the racket head speed on my forehand compared to my backhand, but the backhand topspin cross court and down the line made me feel disconnected from the ball making contact with the string bed. Second, this racket did have some instability issues towards the tip of the racket for both string setups but this is because of the 12 points head light stat. Nothing that a little lead tape can't fix. And trust me, I want to customize this racket. Third, the baseline slices, although had great spin potential, sometimes floated a bit too long on the defensive slices. The launch angle was fine, but it carried a little deeper than I wanted to. Fourth, the kick serves, although had great spin potential in action, landed pretty short into the service box. A lot of my second serves that I would expect to land within three inches of the service line landed well into the middle of the service box, to my surprise. Lastly, this racket was too powerful for flatter shots from the baseline. Although the flatter ground strokes, like approach shots, never really sailed into the tarp on the fly into Narnia, it took me about five hours of straight hitting to dial the flatter shots in with confidence and precision.
The title of this video and its thumbnail are pretty true to the feeling of this racket for me. If you guys like the feel of the Bablot Pure Drive or, you know, the Pure Drive Tour, I highly suggest trying this racket out. Keep in mind, the current Bablot Pure Drive is $250 retail, and the Nova 3 line of rackets, all of them from Didem, are only $240. But for the viewers of this channel, if you use my link that I'll pin in the description or use code MarkS at checkout, you will get 15% off. And yes, it does help out this channel. Hell, the code even works for demos of rackets, tennis balls, and all things dyed, including polys, multi-filament, synthetic, synthetic gut strings. What do you have to lose? Have you tried the Nova V3 Tour or any of the Nova V3 rackets? Did I hit the nail on the head or did I completely miss it? Leave a comment down in the section below or better yet, join my Discord to talk about all things tennis and Camila Georgie. This playtest was done well over 10 hours on court straight with two string setups, the True Pro Black Knight 16 gauge at 50 pounds and the Tour Line Super Toro at 50 pounds. The latter will have a review up shortly. And as always guys and gals, Happy hitting.